In today's video, I am gonna be talking all about long-lasting summer fragrances. So if you wanna find out more, then please keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you are visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. As I already mentioned in the intro, today's video is going to be all about long lasting fragrances for the summer. And this is quite an interesting category because for me, when I think about the summer and what types of fragrances I would typically pull for, you know, light citrus fragrances are go-tos for many people, maybe musky and even maybe fruity fragrances. But those types of scent profiles are notorious for coming with slightly poorer longevity. So on that basis, I've put together a list of long lasting fragrances that are also appropriate for the summertime. So on that note, let's get started on the first fragrance. And I'm starting the list with a big hitter. This is a new fragrance to the market and I think so many of you are going to love this one. So the first fragrance is by Memoirs of a Perfume Collector. And this one is inspired by the Maldives and it is called Trouble in Paradise. Now the Maldives is one of my favorite places in the world. It truly is paradise. And I love that they've named this one Trouble in Paradise. Now, if you've already sampled anything from Memoirs of a Perfume Collector, you will know that they really have a great longevity, at least the ones I have in my collection do at the very least. And this one is without exception. Now, let me set the scene a little bit. This is a tropical fruity fragrance with a predominant note of mango, but it has some real balls and this one will absolutely last on your skin all day and it will linger like nothing else. It's a very unique mango dominant fragrance. You've also got caramel, there's some oud in here, there's also leather. You've got cognac, you've got rum, you've got violet and you've also got cardamom. So yeah, all in all, incredible, incredible note breakdown. And this opens with a beautiful, juicy mango. Very tropical upon first spray, but it's definitely a complex mango. Very, very different from anything on the market. And it really did take my breath away the first time I sampled it. Now, I have actually been playing around with this fragrance for, I believe, six weeks. I was lucky enough to be sent a sample prior to the launch. I didn't know what the fragrance was called. I didn't even know what notes were in the fragrance, but I got to sample the fragrance and it was love at first sniff at that point. So I have had a little bit of time to gather my thoughts on this so I can give you a little bit more than a first impressions. Let's spray this one on a test strip because I just wanna remind myself on the opening. This is mango goodness. I almost feel like this is in the same family as one of their other fragrances, which is called Tales from Zanzibar. That fragrance is truly spectacular as well. But you get that kind of tropical opening. Tales from Zanzibar opens with a guava note, whereas this one is mango. And I'm getting a little bit of booziness at this point. I pick up the violet, which is slightly powdery, but I'm not yet getting the leather and the oud. That actually comes through on the dry down. And when I say that this lasts a good 12 hours minimum on the skin, I am not exaggerating. Whilst you're not left with that juicy mango opening at the eight hour point, this still is an incredible, incredible fragrance, but that is where the other notes really start to shine. You've also got the rum coming through, you've got the leather, you've got the oud, there's a little bit of sandalwood, and I think there's some moss in here as well. And this is a very soft and rounded oud. It's not screechy in any way. And when I say soft, I don't mean soft in terms of performance. I just mean that it's a very well-balanced composition. The oud isn't front stage and center. It's a very likable oud that anyone I think would enjoy. 
and there's just no harshness to this composition at all. So yeah, if you're looking for a long lasting tropical fragrance that's a little bit more unique and has a backbone, then I would highly recommend trying to get your nose on Trouble in Paradise. It's a very new release, so I will check out where they are stocking and if there's anywhere that you can get a sample, but this is one to keep your eye on because it's a brilliant, long-lasting summer fragrance. The next fragrance is from Nishane and it is Wulong Cha. This has mega performance for a citrus dominant fragrance. It actually blew my mind the first time I wore this because not only does it last all day, but it has a mega scent bubble too. And I was never really into citrus fragrances. It's been a category that I've developed into, I would say over the last six months. And Wulong Cha is just such an incredible zesty fragrance with a big hint of tea. And there's also some fig in here. The opening is very much bergamot and mandarin, but the tea does come through right from the start to my nose at the very least. You've also got a nice creamy fig in here, which makes this really enveloping and delicious. And then a really comforting note of musk in the base. You can probably see why I like this one if you know my fragrance taste. It does have some other notes in here too. There's a little bit of nutmeg, but what I really do get from Wulong Cha is mostly the citruses and the citruses last on my skin. Kind of smells a little bit lemony. I know it's bergamot, but I get kind of like a Sicilian lemon. I'm getting lots of that oolong tea and tea fragrances is one of my favorite categories. Stay tuned because I have a tea fragrance video coming very, very soon. And then you get the fig and the musk. The nutmeg is very, very subtle and the mandarin is just juicy. Yeah, Wulong Cha is an incredible freshy. If you like your citrus tea-based fragrances that are a little bit musky and also have a slight creaminess to them, Wulong Cha is well worth checking out. There are more detailed reviews of this one on my channel, but yeah, this is a definite favorite in my collection and it's really, really strong. You don't need many sprays of this one at all. Next up is a new release from Tiziana Terenzi and this one is called Deriva. And can we take a moment to appreciate how incredible this bottle is? It has a huge encrusted gold starfish on the top this really beautiful coral packaging. And I just think this is really special to look at and very unique within my collection too. Now this fragrance has quickly become my best friend's favorite within my collection. I had to give her a decant because she wouldn't stop going on about it. And then she texted me at the end of her work day to let me know that this fragrance was just giving her really, really strong longevity and projection and that her partner really, really loved this on her. Now, of course, I already knew that this was a mega performing fragrance, has huge sillage, mega longevity, and it's quite a complex kind of fruity, complex floral. You're getting lots of that Tiziana Terenzi DNA. If you own anything from Tiziana Terenzi, you probably know what I mean, but they have this really statement fruity DNA, which is slightly musky. And it has this cooling freshness to the opening, which is so, so difficult to describe. But my friend also said the same thing. And there's nothing in the notes to suggest that there's like a cooling kind of menthol note, but I definitely pick out kind of a mint or something really cooling and refreshing. I'm getting lots and lots of pineapple and it's an overly ripe pineapple, which needs to be eaten now before it goes bad. Not to say that the pineapple smells bad, but it's really, really ripe, juicy and sugary. There's some lavender and there's some cardamom. And I think the lavender and the cardamom is probably what's giving it the cooling feeling, but I'm not totally sure. There's some geranium, some gardenia, some raspberry. It's got tonka bean. Yeah, it's just a really, really beautiful release from Tiziana Terenzi. Now this fragrance is at a higher price point than some of the other Tiziana Terenzi fragrances, but I will link this one down below where I can find the best price of it. 
Plus, I also have 20% off at So Avant Garde, and I know they stock Tiziana Terenzi. So if they have Deriva on there, I will also link it down below. But yeah, this is a really, really special fragrance from the house. You have to like your fragrances really sweet. You have to really enjoy that kind of fruity, sweet, floral kind of vibe. But yeah, highly recommend checking out Deriva if this is your kind of note profile. The next fragrance is from Room 1015, and this one is Sonic Flower. So this time we're going for a more musky and orris based fragrance. And this one really took me by surprise in terms of its longevity. The scent profile is incredible. I've reviewed this one quite a few times on my channel, but this type of scent profile doesn't often last more than seven hours on my skin, whereas Sonic Flower really does stick to my personal skin chemistry, and I know it does for other people too. There's carrot seeds, there's pink pepper, we've got orris in here, you've got musk in the base. There's a little bit of jasmine, there's a little bit of ambroxan too. But for me, this pulls very similar to an iris type of fragrance. The orris is creamy a little bit earthy. The jasmine adds a nice touch to it. The ambroxan gives this a great sillage. The carrot seeds also add to that kind of musky earthiness. And the pink pepper just gives this a little bit of an edge. This is kind of a clean aesthetic type of fragrance, but it also has that unique touch to it like I mentioned. This is definitely my favorite scent category in general, and I've really been loving Sonic Flower by Room 1015, as you probably already know if you watch my channel. But yeah, if you want something that's a little bit more musky, a little bit of orris, a little bit of jasmine, then check out Sonic Flower by Room 1015. I know they also sell 10 mil travel atomizers, so that would be a good way to try this brand if you didn't want to go straight in and get a full bottle. Next up is a fragrance fragrance that I've raved about a lot on my channel and this one definitely deserves to be in this list and it is none other than Stefan Humbert Lucas Soleil de Jeda Mango Kiss and oh, wow this is another fantastic mango fragrance with incredible longevity and this is another one that also has a backbone to it very different from Trouble in Paradise but both tropical complex fragrances. Now there is a tropical note of mango in here, but it also has some other interesting notes, which makes this really complex and unique, such as the chamomile. And I love chamomile tea, I drink it very often. So it was quite a surprising first impression when I first tried this, and it was a love at first sniff, absolutely obsessed with Mango Kiss, and so many of my friends and family also love this fragrance. They're always trying to steal it when they come around or spray themselves with it. Have to tell them to back off because, you know, cost per spray, cost per spray. But jokes aside, this also has coconut, ylang ylang, there's some amber in here, there's vanilla, iris butter, and benzoin, and it's just such a magical fragrance. This one is definitely one of my favorite, favorite fragrances in my collection because it's got this really creamy feel to it. And I am a huge Ylang Ylang fan, so I can see why I love this one so much. The coconut's also creamy and it's not too beachy at all, but Ylang Ylang's quite a tropical flower. Add in the coconut. And then the iris butter, oof, this is just a dreamy, dreamy fragrance. If you love mango, but want something a little bit more unique, something that is gonna last all day and it's going to make people wonder what you are wearing, I would highly recommend trying to get a decant of Mango Kiss. Again, if I can find somewhere we can get a decant of this one, I will link it down in the description box below but it has to be my favorite fragrance from Stefan Humbert Lucas, or it's tied in first place. I've mentioned this before in my Stefan Humbert Lucas brand overview or buying guide video, but yeah, I'm truly obsessed with this one. So definitely deserves to be in this list because the longevity is chef's kiss, 
10 hours plus on me. Now the last fragrance that I wanna discuss with you is from Matière Premier, and this one is Parisian Musk. And this is such an amazing fragrance for the summer. I personally would wear this one all year round, but there is something about this one in the high heat that just delivers. It has the most incredible sillage. I remember one time when I wore this out, it was about a year ago, and it was before I had this bottle, I had the travel size, and I just kept smelling my own sillage, and it just had me swooning over it. Now, this is a musky kind of ambrette fragrance. There's also some cedar and some ambroxin. You definitely get a creamy fig in Parisian musk. Now that note isn't listed on Fragrantica, but I'm pretty, pretty sure that there is fig in this fragrance. Yeah, I would definitely perceive this to be a musky fig fragrance. And this is definitely one of my favorite fig fragrances in my collection. I would say at the moment it's in kind of my top two figs. And I love musky fragrances. This smells very clean, but at the same time, it does have a backbone. That fig gives it a creaminess. The ambroxin kind of pushes this out and gives such an incredible, incredible sillage. There's lots of ambrette in here. Yeah, this one is just a really special one in my collection. Lasts all day. I would say I get about nine hours wear. And for me, that's a long lasting fragrance specifically for this type of scent profile. But you have to bear in mind, I'm not an over sprayer. I roughly do anywhere between two to five sprays. I know it's criminal to some people. So if you are someone who likes to spray your perfume properly, then you're probably going to get even better longevity out of this one. But yeah, Parisian Musk is an incredible long lasting fragrance for the summer. So that was all of the fragrances that I wanted to discuss today. What I wanna know, and it's what I always want to know, is what are your favorite long lasting fragrances for the summer? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. I always read all of the comments. I find so many incredible recommendations from you. I know I say it all the time, but please do keep them coming because I have discovered some of my favorite, favorite fragrances within my collection through the comment sections. So no gatekeeping, please share the love. Thank you so much for watching today. It's been a pleasure as always. I hope to see you in a future video to come. Thank you so much and goodbye.